Hey guys, it's Miss Harrides here at the Study Hive, and today we're going to be looking at factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. So let's get started. So this lesson is all about factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis and what you really want to get out of this lesson are three key objectives. The first one is what are the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. Uh, the second one which students usually find quite difficult is how do you interpret graphs and the final one is looking at how greenhouses are used by farmers to increase the rate of photosynthesis. So key words just to listen out for that you really want to use in your exams are words such as photosynthesis, rate, yield, chlorophyll and limiting factors and I'll explain what they mean as we go through the lesson. So the first question I have for you why do leaves change their colour in autumn? So we all walk through autumn seeing these beautiful trees, but what causes them to change from green to oranges and yellows and reds? And it all comes down to chlorophyll. Plants already have lots of pigments found in their leaves. However, it's the chlorophyll that allows it to be shown as green. So when there's a lot of sunlight, the chlorophyll is working away, allowing the plant to photosynthesize, creating this green pigment but when autumn comes there's actually less sunlight and when there's less sunlight chlorophyll starts to break down and the other pigments that already exist in the plant start to express their beautiful colors so let's head into a recap on what photosynthesis is. So photosynthesis is the process of how the plant makes glucose and it uses carbon dioxide and water, the reactants which react together in the presence of light and that is what makes the products glucose and oxygen. And this all happens in the leaf, if you look here, within the cells and within the cells you have chloroplast which is the organelle that contains a pigment inside there, which is chlorophyll. So this lesson is looking at the rate of photosynthesis. Now the word rate means how fast something happens, the speed at which it happens. And we're going to look at what factors affect the rate of photosynthesis. So the main limiting factors that we'll be looking at in today's lesson is one, light intensity, two, temperature, three, carbon dioxide concentration, and four, chlorophyll. So let's start with chlorophyll first. So as mentioned before, chlorophyll is the pigment that makes the plant green, and it's found in the chloroplast, which can be found in your cells, and these cells might be found in your leaves, for example. Now, different plants have different levels of chlorophyll and that's from a genetic perspective but there are other factors that can actually affect the amount of chlorophyll that is found in a plant. This could be for example a lack of nutrients, it could be diseases, plants also get diseases just like us or it could be environmental stress and this will affect the chloroplast which will therefore affect how much chlorophyll a plant has and if it reduces the chlorophyll levels it's going to decrease the rate of photosynthesis. So if you don't know what a limiting factor is, it's anything that limits or restricts something reaching its maximum potential. So the second factor and the most important factor for photosynthesis to occur is light intensity. A lot of students find it difficult as to read these graphs. Now the limiting factor will always go on my x-axis. My x-axis is the one that goes this way and my y-axis is the one that goes this way will say the rate of photosynthesis. So remember x comes before y in the alphabet and you always crawl before you can walk and that's how you remember the letters X and Y. Now if we imagine that the numbers are increasing here and the numbers are increasing here, we can assume that as light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. But as you can see here, when it gets to this point, it changes direction and it starts to plateau, which means it starts to go flat. So we must ask ourselves, 
what is causing it to go flat? And it's not light intensity because there's lots of light intensity there. Something else is limiting the rate of photosynthesis from increasing any further. So an example of this, it might be limited by the amount of chlorophyll that it has in the plant. If there's only a certain amount of chlorophyll, then there's only going to be a certain amount of light intensity that it can take. Another factor could be the carbon dioxide levels or the temperature. And these could be the limiting factors that is not enough causing this line to plateau. So the second factor we're going to be looking at is the concentration of carbon dioxide. And if you look at this graph that I've drawn, you can see it's a very similar shape to the previous graph. Now, in the same way, we can describe this as as the concentration of carbon dioxide is increasing, the rate of photosynthesis is also increasing. But you can see here that it starts to plateau again, so it starts to go flat. So again, there's something else that is limiting to stop the rate of photosynthesis increasing. And again, this could be the light intensity or the amount of chlorophyll that the plant has. Now the final factor that we're going to be looking at is temperature and you can see this one is slightly different to the previous graphs. So the temperature increases which causes the rate of photosynthesis to increase until it reaches its optimum. A really beautiful key word there is optimum because optimum means the maximum. So it reaches its optimum and then it goes starts to decline. Now something is causing this decline and in this case it's the enzyme. So if you remember the lesson about about enzymes. Enzymes speed up a reaction and every reaction that takes place in plants usually requires enzymes. So when they hit a certain temperature which is too hot for the enzymes they start to denature which means they change their shape and they can no longer allow that reaction to take place. So in this case you can see that the enzymes have probably denatured here causing the rate of photosynthesis to decline and no longer occur. So some exam question examples. So if you look at this uh, graph here, the interesting thing about this graph is that it has two lines. So we're looking at light intensity. Remember, light intensity will always be on the x-axis because it's the limiting factor, and rate of photosynthesis will be on the y-axis. Remember, x before y, you crawl before you walk. So here it shows that there are two experiments happening. One experiment happening at 10 degrees Celsius and another experiment happening at 20 degrees Celsius. So what is the difference between the two experiments? You can see that the rate of photosynthesis is less here than the rate of photosynthesis here. You can see this is the highest amount of photosynthesis that is taking place. So the limiting factor in this experiment over here must be temperature because this experiment is happening at 10 degrees Celsius and this temperature which is 20 degrees Celsius which is a higher temperature is allowing the rate of photosynthesis to increase. So another example here to really build your confidence you've got two experiments happening you can see because there's two lines over here but you've got so many different pieces of information to take in. So we're looking at light intensity and how that affects the rate of photosynthesis but both experiments are happening at the same temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So what is the difference between these two? Well, this experiment is happening at 0.5 concentration of carbon dioxide, and this experiment is happening at 0.75% concentration of carbon dioxide. So what's the limiting factor in this experiment to prevent it from reaching a higher rate of photosynthesis? Well, it has to be the concentration levels because it's got less carbon dioxide available to it. So science applies to so many aspects of your life, whether you realize it or you don't. And it's the same that goes with farmers. Farmers try to maximize their yield. Now, when I say yield, it's the amount of something that they have because they're business people. So they want to maximize how many crops they have because it's going to give them more money. So how do farmers artificially create these conditions? They have greenhouses and greenhouses allow them to control these different variables. So let's have a look at some of these variables. So firstly, greenhouses are like glass sheds and they put their crops in there and they control these conditions in order to get the maximum growth out of these crops. So the first thing that the glass does for the greenhouse is that it traps the sun's heat and this increases the temperature and remember if we increase the temperature to a certain level we're going to maximize the rate of photosynthesis. 
So another thing that you can have in a greenhouse is a heater and this can provide artificial heat whether it's day or night especially in colder climates. Now a specific example of this heater could be a paraffin heater and not only does this give you heat but it also pumps in extra carbon dioxide. Remember both heat and carbon dioxide levels are really important to increase the rate of photosynthesis to increase the yield of the crop. So another really positive thing about greenhouse is that they provide an enclosed space and that reduces pests and pathogens from eating away at their crops. Now if you haven't heard of the word pathogen, you will when you learn about the immune system. And a pathogen is any microorganism that can cause a disease. So we really don't want that to eat at our crops. So let me just highlight that there for you. Farmers also use fertilizers and they are full of minerals. So things like nitrates, for example, should be plentiful in soil. But if they're not plentiful, then we can just add them in fertilizers and that helps the plants grow. So then again, that's going to increase the yield of the crops. Pesticides can also be used by farmers. It's not something that we massively like to have pesticides on our crops, but they are good to get rid of pests because they're going to eat away at their crops. And if they do that to the farmer, they're not going to have many crops to sell. They're not going to make much money. So that's why they use uh, pesticides. So all of these factors are really great, but farmers have to think about how expensive this is going to be. So they've got to balance out the costs versus the yield that they're going to gain from them. So to summarize this lesson, we looked at four factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. This was carbon dioxide concentration, light intensity, chlorophyll and temperature. We looked at what a limiting factor is and we use this to apply it to different types of graphs. And the final thing that we looked at is looking at how farmers artificially create these conditions to maximize their yield. So that takes us to the end of this lesson and I hope that really makes you confident on the topic. Remember you can pause this as many times as you want and go at your own pace. And if you've forgotten anything on photosynthesis then check out our other video on photosynthesis as a recap and then you can come back to this lesson and refresh the whole thing. I hope you really enjoyed that and I will see you in our next video. Bye!